yo somos constructores de paz. No tenemos que ser diplomáticos en las Naciones Unidas para construir la paz. You and I are peace builders. We don't have to be diplomats in the United Nations to build peace. I teach Spanish at a local high school. Originally, my goal was to teach students the language and the culture of Spanish-speaking countries. That is the objective of most language classes. However, I discovered that through language, we have the power to teach global and social justice issues and peace-building skills using Spanish as a communication tool. In my year with the Peace Teacher Program, I learned that peace-building skills should be an essential part of our education system because it can be applied in any situation. You're probably asking, why do you teach peace-building in a foreign language class? Or how do you teach peace-building in a foreign language class? Why do you want to give yourself more work? Just follow a book. My answer to you is, why not? As teachers, we do our part to change the world every day. The students of today are going to be the future presidents, senators, doctors, lawyers, and teachers of tomorrow. And they're the agents of change in a more peaceful world. But it's not just useful for the students to learn. So, how do you teach and how students learn peace building? The first step is to listen to each other. Listening skills are taught to children at a young age. However, studies show that we only remember between 25 to 50 percent of what we hear. And what we hear may not always be the most important information communicated. This is why effective communication is important. Effective communication consists of both listening and speaking. Active listening is a way of listening and responding to a person that will improve mutual understanding and can be the first step to diffuse a situation and seek solutions to a problem. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible to teach kids active listening skills? Are teachers doing this already in the classroom? Most teachers will do group work. Most of the time, students try to be in the groups with their friends. But what about that time when the teacher decides the groups and they're no longer working with their friends? Some students will have a difficult time talking to each other. At that moment, you're going to be teaching them peace building skills. They have to listen to everyone's ideas, and they have to make decisions that will be the best for the group and for the project as a whole. You can teach peace building anywhere and to any age group. Sometimes we think that peace building skills are only necessary in areas where we have a war or armed conflict. I have learned that conflict is part of our life, no matter where we live. Sometimes, some of you guys in the audience are probably going to disagree with the ideas we're presenting today. But we have to understand that we may disagree, and it can lead to a conflict, but the solution, peace, will start when we listen to each other. Conflict sometimes is perceived as something negative, but some conflict is part of our daily life, no matter where we live. It's a natural part of our lives. Teaching peace building in the classroom is not and should not be complicated. If you're a teacher, by now you're probably saying, this is extra work, or this will not align with my curriculum. Peace building skills should be integrated in the units and lessons you are doing in your classroom. You can think of this as some fun learning activities you can do with your students. In order to understand this concept, we need to first define what is peace and what is conflict. Let's start with the definition of conflict. I'm going to give you an activity that you can use in your classroom or in your life. Let's look at this image. What do you see? Depending on your perspective, you can see two faces or a cup. If you do this activity in the classroom, your students are going to give you those two answers. Someone will say, I only see two faces, there is no a cup. And someone else will say, you're wrong, there is only a cup, there are no faces. But we have to understand if that the difference in perception can lead to a conflict. But when we start looking at different ideas, we can come together, talk, and find a solution which is peace. 
ask your students to think of other conflicts they have encountered in their life. It could be from school, from home, or from the community. Once they understand the definition of conflict, then move on to the definition of peace. I ask my students to think of the definition of peace and draw it. Their drawings were very interesting. For some of them, peace was the unity of races or religions. For others, it was a beautiful flower or landscape. Or it could be as simple as just watching the sunset with someone. In my work with the Peace Teacher Program with USIP, I learned that peace could be the end of violence or the absence of conflict. Or it could be just the attainment of justice or social stability. Okay? It could also be just attainment of economic well-being or basic freedoms. Depending on the individual, peace will have a different meaning. You don't have to be a diplomat to be a peace builder. When I told my students last year that I was going to integrate peace building skills into my Spanish classes, they all look at me and probably wonder, wait, am I still in a Spanish class? We started the conversation with a worship title, Identifica los Constructores de Paz. I asked them to name peace builders from our country, outside the country, female peace builders under the age of 30, Nobel Prize peace winners, and from our community. They were able to name some of the most famous ones. Gandhi, Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela, Rigoberta Menchú, Malala. They had a hard time naming people under 30 and from our community. I told them, right here in this classroom, we have 30 peace builders. Now let's think what the world will be like, how we can change the world if we make sure that everyone understood and implemented peace building within their own life. By no means we will get rid of conflict but we will become better conflict resolvers, better listeners, and better peace builders. The world will be one of unity and acceptance instead of divisions. Peace building can be achieved by serving your community. Gandhi once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Change starts with us. This is something that our students are already doing as part of their school requirements. All of them have to complete community service hours. But we have to make sure that they're doing more than just checking off a to-do list. Let me give you some examples. In the Christmas season, there are some student organizations that collect presents for migrant kids or for the homeless shelters. We can think of this as something very simple. We're just collecting presents. But think of that family that doesn't have the financial means to buy presents for his or her kids. When they receive those presents, that is building peace. Or you can also have organizations in our community or schools that collect canned goods for food pantries or for the food backpack programs. Those students are building peace by providing food that may be a scarcity for some families. Other ideas, you can write positive messages or notes for a group of students in a school that may be discriminated against or bullied. Yes, they're just notes or positive messages. But when that person receives that note, that is building peace. Any one of you in the audience today can work to build peace in your community by understanding the conflicts that are happening around us, and you can bring joy and happiness to, the, to your community. It could be as simple as organizing a food drive for the homeless, collecting presents for underprivileged kids in, co in your community, creating a space for different groups in society com to come together and talk. It could be just writing positive messages for your co-workers or classmates. Some of you in the audience have the resources and power to make bigger impacts in society. Look at your talents and your resources and be creative when it comes to building peace.
make a bracelet, make a quilt. Say good morning to everyone on the streets. Talk to someone new. Collect presents. Put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to understand their point of view. We may not be able to change the world today, but all of your actions are going to have an effect. And it's the sum of all those effects that is going to build peace. Thank you.